What's up guys, welcome back to Tidal Gardens. I just got back from my first Aquashella and I want to tell y'all how it went. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. So starting out, our flight took off from Cleveland Airport at a late 7 p.m. on that Friday. My boyfriend and I were kind of tired already and there was a child kicking my seat, but it was okay. I got to watch Dune on the plane the entire way there, so it was completely fine. Two hours later, we finally made it to Orlando and got to the Gaylord Palms Resort for the convention. Aquashella was held here last year as well, and it's such a pretty venue. And I've been to the Gaylord Resort in International Harbor before, up near DC, and that's pretty too, but it doesn't compare to the one in Orlando. The atrium was absolutely beautiful complete with light shows, live plants, and in true Florida fashion, alligators. So fast forward to the next day, we got a fancy breakfast with Than and headed off to the convention center. One of the many Tidal Gardens perks was being able to get into the convention early to get some footage without people getting in my way and vice versa, because I honestly don't want to get in anyone else's way either. And also looking at this line, there was no way I was going to have a good time waiting in that. It went all the way out the back doors and into the parking garage. So the first thing that you can see when you walk into Aquashella is this huge maze tunnel thing called the Aqua Crib, filled with coral and fish sculptures and light shows that were synced to music. It was so cool to experience. And I knew that this was going to be at the event because I saw the old footage from fans' previous trips to Aquashella, but seeing it in person is so much different, I promise you. Inside the tunnel, they had all these sculptures of fish and corals made out of different materials like tissue paper, foam pieces, and even some spray foam, I think. They also had multiple tanks situated throughout the tunnel as well, like a moray eel tank and a freshwater tank to name a few. I still wish I could have put an eel in my tank here. Maybe I can convince Than to put one in the Peninsula show tank. Anyway, after exiting the tunnel, you enter the main show floor, which is organized into multiple sections. They bleed into each other a little bit, but there are definitely distinct sections on the show floor based on what hobby you fancy. For the most part, you have a saltwater section with corals and such, and then you have a pretty massive freshwater section, and then you have a reptiles and amphibian section. Than actually told me ahead of time that when it comes to the tank keeping hobby as a whole, the freshwater side of things tends to be a bit more popular. And considering how many freshwater vendors there were, I don't think he was kidding. Although it was pretty cool to see a side of this hobby I wasn't used to. Yeah, seeing the saltwater side was awesome and I actually knew what I was looking at. I loved the artwork and the fish, as well as the impressive spread of corals that the vendors had set out. But to be honest, I see this stuff every day. <laughs> I have photographed thousands upon thousands of corals over the course of two years that I've been at Tidal Gardens, so I guess you could say that it's sort of lost its wow factor to me. Whereas on the flip side of things, in the freshwater section, I saw so many different kinds of fish that I've never seen before, or just don't have that much interaction with in general. So it still had that little bit of uh, little kid excitement slash wonder involved. However, despite how much I love the aquatic side of things, there was just one part of Aquashella I couldn't wait to see, that I was the most excited for, and that was the reptile section. I don't have my blue-tongued skink and carpet python tattoos for nothing. I am absolutely in love with reptiles of all kinds, 
Despite never caring for any of my own due to space issues in our apartment, along with moving around quite a bit when I was younger, I love them all. And I'll be honest, once I saw the selection of ball pythons, I was so close to just taking the banana morph home with me. You have no idea the amount of restraint I had to put myself under to keep myself from sticking a snake into my pocket. I just, ugh, <laughs> it took a lot of energy, believe me. Alongside all the reptiles, there were some other miscellaneous animals at the event, mostly for educational purposes and interactions, like owls, caimans, and also a skunk. Although he was a bit shy, so he never actually came out. After wandering around for a bit, we actually went off to relax at the water park the hotel had before coming back down after the general admission line had made its way through and into the venue at around like 1 or 2 p.m. So please don't roast me for my appearance. It's the pool's fault for making me look like absolute garbage for the rest of the day. <laughs> at this point, the convention really came alive with a lot more people walking around. Lots of them wanted to see Than, obviously, and I was able to find some other influencers who were there as well, like Bahama Llama Corals and Queen of Reef on the YouTube side of things. And then on the photography side of things, I was able to finally meet the very talented Michael Vargas. Now that more people started to show up, a lot more events started taking place. I didn't even expect there to be contests, if I'm being completely honest. I was just expecting there to be a lot of vendors, some panels where people would talk, and then that was it. One of the events I got to watch was the Frag Off, where three competitors go head to head creating frags from a SPS, LPS, and zoanthid colony, and in the end are judged on the quality of the frags they are able to create in a certain time frame. You may also notice this guy filming here. I don't know what kind of skills he has with a camera, but all his handheld footage that was getting broadcast to the screens on the side was really steady. Like really steady for handheld footage. We ended up meeting him again at a VAP event later that night, and my boyfriend, who also works in video production, and I had to know how he did it. Was it a lens with great internal stabilization? Was it a certain handheld technique? What was it? It ended up being kind of anticlimactic because he said he just kind of picked up the camera and started filming the event. So I, I guess we'll never know. Speaking of the VIP event, Fan was able to get us into a VIP event hosted by Aquashella for a lot of the vendors and internet personalities. And I was able to meet a lot of other YouTubers in person for the first time there. And it was pretty cool hearing everyone's stories on how they got into the YouTube side of the hobby and what kind of lives they live outside of that, which I always kind of found pretty interesting. It's that sort of Clark Kent life behind the Superman facade that no one really gets to see all the time on screen. So it's like I was getting let in on a little secret. During the event, you were meant to sit and mingle, but the line to the open bar got so long that you could get a drink, immediately get back in line, and be finished with your drink by the time that you got back to the front of the line. So everyone that we were having conversations with all got in line with us, and we just kind of rode this loop for three or four drinks while chatting it up. It was actually pretty funny. So other than that, that's essentially the gist of my trip to Aquashella. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me experience it for the first time, and maybe I'll go back sometime in the future. Did any of you guys also attend the event? Let us know how it went for you in the comments down below. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Take care, and as always, happy reefing.